What's up, everybody? Evan here for Grips.com, continuing with Project Get Me Stacking. Today's question goes out to both my online and my live players. It's about tournaments. We've been covering a lot of tournaments lately, teaching you how to play them, how to think about them, how to win them. And now, we're going to talk about which tournaments to play to maximize your expectation, your results, your profits. So, hey again, thanks as always for the vids. My next question relates to the various types of tournament options out there. Which tournaments, be they large field, small field, turbo, regular, etc., do you recommend we play? Are there any tournament modes which you feel should be favored and any which you feel we should avoid? Cheers, Jason. <clears throat> And this is a great topic um, in poker. It's all about maximizing our expectation, maximizing the results we get for the work we put in. So making sure that you're playing the right formats is something that's gonna go a really long way in terms of maximizing the dollars you get back for every hour you put in at the tables and every click you make of the mouse. So let's get to that presentation. First thing to consider when looking at tournaments is the field size. Do you want to be playing large field tournaments or small field tournaments? Well, that comes down to your goal and reason for playing tournaments. So maybe that should actually be the first thing you consider. Are you playing tournaments to make money for the thrill and excitement of the big score? For a quick gambling fix? or to occupy an entire evening. These things are very important to choosing the right tournament type for you. Small field tournaments are great for quite a few reasons. The biggest one is that with uh, the field size being quite small, your odds of final tabling, making the top three, and winning are all quite good. I mean, think about it. What are your odds of winning a 100-person tournament if everyone has the same skill level? And what are your odds of winning a 10,000-person tournament if you're all the same skill level? Even if you think you're twice as good as everyone else in the 10,000-person tournament, your odds still can't be better than what? 5,000 to 1? 2,000 to 1 if you're, you're the best in the world? Still less than the 100 to 1 shot in the small field. So these are the kind of tournaments that you can expect to make it near the end very consistently, thereby giving you a steady earn, and also, very importantly, lots of experience playing in deep, high-pressure situations like the final table bubble or shorthanded for all the dough. I always make sure to throw a few of these into my schedule they are really great for acting as day savers and make it much harder to brick an entire session because the odds of cashing or winning the thing and making enough money to cover a lot of buy-ins is just so much greater. Big field tournaments are the opposite. You aren't going to win them very often, but when you do, you're going to win huge. This is why people love playing on Poker Stars, the, the dream of the big score. The first thing to consider with the large field tournament is that with a lot of players, there are going to be a lot of bad players. Both the fold till I fall types and blast while I last types. This means more variance, more bad beats, more swings in each individual tournament and between your deep runs so your stack will probably fluctuate more in these big field tournaments and how often you cash is going to fluctuate more these are the these are the types of tournaments that can skyrocket your bankroll and quickly move you up limits if you're running very hot but recognize when you cash it's most often going to be for one and a half to two and a half times your money because unless you make the final 50 maybe the final hundred. Each pay jump is pretty insignificant. 
It's almost like the in the money stage is a tournament within a tournament. And it's the tournament that actually counts. Now what I will say about big field tournaments is with all the weak players and stuff, if you do get deep, your chances of closing it out are probably higher than in a small field tournament if there are the exact same amount of players left just because they're going to be more bad players. And also, if you want to find soft tournaments, look for the ones that have a lot of satellites running to them. Because the more satellite players in there, that's more people who are going to be uncomfortable with the buy-in and probably not playing all that well. Now that we've talked about field size, let's move on to structure. And there are basically three types of structures. Slow structures, fast structures, and super fast structures. If you're a good player, then your edge should be biggest when stacks are deepest. So if you want to maximize your edge and have the best chance at caching, going deep, and winning, you'll want to play a tournament with slow blind levels. So if you're only planning to play a couple of tournaments or you have all day to play a tournament, regular speeds and even um, deep stacked or slow speed tournaments are going to be the best because you just get more opportunities to make good plays, play deep stack, wait for hands, just use every trick in your um, arsenal. But maybe maybe you're not that great at deep stack play. Maybe you are strongest in short stack play. You're good at push folding. In which case playing turbos may suit your fancy. If you're a great multi-tabler, turbos are a nice option because the decisions are much simpler on average than deep stack decisions, requiring less thought, so you can play more tables. And the tournaments are over much faster, and thus you can play many more turbos in a session than you can if you were playing regular speed ones. And this applies to 180 mans too, for all the grinders, 180 man grinders out there, because I know they have a turbo option. So if you assume your ROI in each format is similar, and you're looking to maximize your hourly expectation, turbos may be the play. So turbos maximize hourly, regular maximize chances of winning. So if you're pressed for time, um, yeah, think turbos. And finally, we have the hyper turbos, which never take more than about two hours. So if you're just looking to get a quick fix, you wanna have some fun, hyper turbos are gonna be a fine fit. Also worth mentioning is that recreational players tend to be more attracted to fast-paced tournaments over slow ones. So even though the shallower stacks level out the playing field somewhat, you would probably find on average weaker players in turbo tournaments, all other factors being the same. And I hope this makes it clear why knowing what your reason for playing the tournaments is, your goal with playing the tournaments is really important to finding the right uh, session or the right tournament format for you. And finally, let's talk about formats. And formats basically decide how many chips are in play. Uh, more chips means more stack depth on average and more edge for a good player. So for anyone out there trying to build their role playing tournaments, I would really encourage you to try out rebuys or rebuy and add on tournaments. They're my personal favorite. One thing to note though is if you're playing a $3 rebuy, you should probably consider it a $15 tournament. Um, and if you're playing a single rebuy and add-on, treat the buy-in as the maximum. So a 5 2 r one a is a $20 tournament when deciding if you're playing within your bankroll. Anyway, about rebuys, uh, the benefits. For one, it puts a lot of chips in weaker players' hands, and they're prone to punting off 40 to 100 big blind stacks in really bad spots, including deep in the tournament. Um, it also gives you a chance to build a stack and have a second or third chance to do so. You can get a little more gamble in the mix for that hour and a half, two hour rebuy period. So you get a higher chance of going somewhat deep in the tournament. Also a pretty funny thing is that often a third of the field will be eliminated before the tournament even technically starts. The main perk, though, is the chance to play more deep stack poker with weak players. 
I also find that in single or double rebuy tournaments, the fields tend to be exceptionally soft. Now, re-entries, on the other hand, do give you that second, third, fourth chance. But in my experience, fish are much more likely to rebuy than they are to re-enter. Maybe this is just because when they enter a rebuy, they know it's a rebuy, but re-entries, sometimes it's not made apparent. So with re-entries, although you'll have more chips in play, expect to see a higher concentration of grinders, a higher reg to fish ratio than you would see in regular rebuy tournaments. As I like to say, at the end of the day, you should play to your strengths. Use this information as a guideline to choose what tournaments are best suited to your style, your schedules, and your goals. Not every tournament is going to be good for everyone, and you may excel in a format that other players don't. The one type of tournament that should usually be played, though, is one with overlay. That's when a tournament doesn't reach its guaranteed prize pool, since you're effectively playing at a discount just by registering. Like, think if it's a, if it's a $10 tournament with 10 k guaranteed and only 500 players register, well, your $10 that you registered for is worth 20 bucks because you're playing for a 10 k prize pool even though you only, the players only put up 5,000. So keep your eyes open for those ones and get that value. Finally, a quick note about mixing tournaments. Playing different games like Omaha and Hold'em at the same time or different table sizes like Six Max and Heads Up while playing Full Ring require a different thought process. The dynamics of the games are different. So if you wanna do your brain a favor and have as much mental capacity as possible for the long session. Try to keep all your tournaments as similar as possible when you session so that decision-making criteria will be universal. And most importantly, plan your session before you register. You know what, I'm going to bring the camera back to me for that point because it's really, really important. And remember, plan, plan your session before you register. You have to know what you're getting yourself into, how long you're gonna be at the helm, and you know when you're gonna be playing fast tournaments, when you're gonna be playing slow tournaments, how many tables are gonna be going at once, how much pressure you're gonna be under. All this has to be pre-planned if you wanna give yourself the best shot at having a successful session. Because if things are coming at you out of left field and curveballs constantly and you aren't prepared for it, Odds are you're gonna react the wrong way, maybe spew off some tournaments to free off some screen space. I know I've done this many, many times, so really just take the time to figure out your goals for the session, why you wanna play these tournaments, and then plan how you're going to get those results. If you wanna get victories, play the tournaments with small fields and slow structures. If you just want to put in volume, make money and you're very confident in your short stack game, play a bunch of turbos and hyper turbos and fit as many on your screen as you possibly can. Um, and that's what I have to say about that. At the end of the day, you will know what's best for you. Um, I can't make that decision for you. That's why I didn't say, this is the one you got to play. I gave you the tools to figure it out for yourself. So that's going to wrap up my thoughts on that. Um, if you have any questions that you'd like answered by me, please send them over to evan at grips.com with the subject line, get me stacking. Hopefully, I can answer your question and help you get stacking. Um, if you're enjoying this series, if you're enjoying these types of videos, uh, please subscribe to the channel by clicking the red button below and show your support. You'll be notified every time a new video is released. And also, Get active in the comments, guys. Let me know and let each other know what tournaments you like to play and why. And who knows, maybe, maybe by trying out different formats and listening to other people's reasonings, you might find a format that really works for you that you didn't know about. Um, if you only play one type of tournament right now, experiment with the other ones. See how you feel about them. I know that I used to hate turbos and so I'd only play regulars, but I found out recently that despite the fact I don't love turbos, I really enjoy hypers. 
random, but it happens. And the only way I can find that out is by experimenting and getting those firsthand experiences of playing them myself. Anyway, that is going to do it. Don't forget to like and um, hope you found the video educational, entertaining, insightful, informative. You know what to do. Take what you learned. Go out there. Get stacking. It's been Evan for Grips.com. Say in peace.